Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today of a way to put uh, stitching on a product or uh, surface in SolidWorks. So I was working on something recently, I had to put some sort of indicative stitching in for rendering purposes and and roll forward and just explain a few things. Okay, so I've just created a strap using 3D sketch and some cross curves and a loft using a th the 3D sketch as the uh, centerline parameter, centerline, normal to profile at each end. And with that I have thickened it inwards and then made an offset of the outside surface, extended the edges on that offside, offset surface so they extend outside sides of the thickened surface and I'll split that into two using the split tool. So now I have two solid bodies. But say Pretend this is a belt and there's front and back leather. And now I'm going to create like a a dip in the material or leather or whatever it is uh, to simulate like the stitching pulling inwards. So to do that I've created a couple of sweeps that run down each side and these sweeps are made just using the edge and using the circular profile. So these are three millimeters so that means my line where the stitching is running is going to be 1.5 millimeters in and then with those sweeps you create split lines on the top and then using ruled surface create a surface normal to the surface so ruled surface insert surface ruled and then pick normal to surface and then I pick the split line and make it a nominal amount outwards okay I'll just roll forward because I've already got the set up so there's the ruled surfaces, a nominal amount outwards. And then I'm going to extend each of these inwards, like extend the inside edge as far as I want it to um, create the dip. So if you imagine this is going to dip on to that point there. So in this case, I've made those 0.2 millimeter deep. Okay. And now I'm going to offset those by zero just to make a copy of each of these because I need a copy of these to use as my patterning, um, pattern along curve uh, surface control things. So I've got those offset hidden. Now, what I need to do is just offset, uh, sorry, extend the end of each of the ruled surfaces so they cross the center line because I'm going to thicken and cut these. And if they're coincident with this end face here, um, sometimes you end up with like a tinsy little sliver surface, like a zero geometry, zero thickness geometry thing going on. So now I'm just going to create two cut thickens with those. So if I go in and edit one of these, cut thicken mid plane thickness. So you could pick a side, but I've picked mid plane uh, and then pick the body you want it to cut. So I'm left with that groove. And that groove is normal to surface as it runs around, which is quite useful. I'm now going to put fillets on there, on those top edges, to simulate the pulling in of the stitching. Because these are normal to surface, that means the radius is going to be same angle on each side, so it's not going to look wonky halfway around. Okay, so I've just picked those four edges of the grooves and added a three millimeter radius, give it to continuous, and that goes on a fine. Okay, so I've got the groove creation, or the, you know, like the pulling part of it done. So next up is to figure out how to make the, the actual um, stitching. Okay, I just put some radiuses on the sides there just to, just because. Okay, so for the pattern of the stitching, I'm going to bring up those back here. We made uh, copies of our ruled surface. So now I'm just going to extend those. As you can see, they were touching the bottom of our little our thick and cut there. I'm just going to extend those an, an, another amount down. In this case, it's 0.1 millimeter. I'll hide the solid body there. Now I'm going to create a pipe, a solid pipe along the bottom of each of those which is insert boss base sweep and circular profile. So I've just picked the edge 
made it point 0.1 and haven't merged it with any other solid bodies. Okay, and now I'm going to create a stitch section on the end. So I've made a plane because this is the center line. I've picked two points, the top and bottom point on the offset of the ruled surface and their normal to, or perpendicular to the right plane. I'll just hide this sweep here for a second. And I've done the same on the other ribbon. I'll just look at this one ribbon here because everything that's being done here is being reflected over here. I've created a sketch on the plane I just created. So this is effectively my stitch. I'm going to sweep an ellipse along this. Um, it's the spline. So yeah, you can fiddle with the dimensions depending on what you want. So I created a plane normal to the end of that sketch and then create an ellipse on there as you can see, and then sweep that along, okay, and that gets reflected again on the other side, same dimensions. Now we're onto the patterning, so insert pattern mirror, curve driven pattern. So I'll go into this pattern I've created, which I will show, and I'll have this, uh, the sweep that we created, the little 0.1 sweep, solid, and this is a solid sweep here as well, by the way. I'm working in solids for this because I want to create a single body for the stitching on each side because otherwise we end up with way too many bodies. So if I go into the curve pattern, so I've picked the edge. The edge is the lower edge of the surface. So that's the edge that's using for the pattern. And then I have to pick a face normal that uses this face normal to calculate the twist, uh, how to orient the the pattern as it goes along because the stitch as you can see if it didn't orient itself along the surface the the the, the stitch normal would stay the same uh, so it wouldn't lie properly on the surface so pick that surface there and then i've picked um the feature which is the sweep and i've picked i uh, i did some messing around and geometry patterns uh like four times quicker the rebuild so geometry pattern and then feature scope We've picked that sweep, which is 0.1. So that's like all these all these stitches are going to uh, combine with that that thin pipe that we created. So we go, okay, that's going to rebuild, and I have the same thing on the other side as well. So we'll roll that forward, and this didn't combine with the seed feature of the pattern for some reason. So I've added a combine at the top. I'll just bring up the solid. So that pattern didn't combine with this first stitch, so I've just got a couple of combined features there. And then to tidy things up so I can mirror it over, I've used a surface cut using the right plane to trim the ends of these stitches off. Right, so, and then I can mirror it over. And those have combined when they're mirrored, like so. So yeah, you can pick, you know, you can do whatever sort of section stitch you want. Um, you got quite a lot of flexibility and as I said we end up with just four bodies because if I isolate this one and have a look at the back you can see it's combined whoops it's combined onto that 0.1 diameter so if you want the stitches they don't actually meet in the middle here like if they had a bit of a gap or whatever um, they merge onto this solid body which is great because otherwise the pattern of using the geometry pattern it, 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 it wants it to merge onto something so and it seems to update okay like if I change the angle of the section here we made that 90 degrees and rebuilt okay so that's rebuilt okay um, you might if you're fiddling around with angles of bits of fabric or whatever or, or straps like this then you might need to update your um your your count of instances so your gaps is consistent but generally it works okay probably the first time i've had to put stitching on in solidworks normally do it when i in my rendering application but yeah if you need it there is ways to do it so thanks for watching have a good night andrew jackson aj design studio bye